Okay, so <clears throat> uh, a little bit about Arkanoa. Um, we're specifically dedicated to maintaining OS2 and derivative operating systems uh, as long as possible. As long as there is hardware that will support running OS2, um, that's what our focus is. Our focus is also on running OS2 on bare metal. That doesn't mean that, that we don't consider running OS2 uh, in virtual machines, but our main focus is on supporting native hardware. Um, and we want to do that, as I say, for as, as much mileage as we can get out of the operating system. That's, that's our plan. Next slide. So in 2014, we, um, we started to get things put together for the, the company. We um, contacted people we knew who were in a position to contribute to the, to the overall project. We formed a new company in Delaware in the United States. We built out a website. Um, websites are, by their very nature, um, works in progress at all times, and ours is no exception. So we're, we're still working to improve things and uh, add support for, for different features. Um, and that stuff is, is in the pipeline. It's, it's coming. Um, we started some, some new development in 2014. And we started packaging things in such a way that they could be uh, downloaded and installed by people without having to go to 15 different sites, um, net labs, hubs, um, Mensis to download bits and pieces. Instead, these drivers can all be downloaded directly from Arkanoe. Next slide. In the first quarter of 2015, we contacted Alt Richmond, uh, who a number of years ago acquired the sources to the SNAP uh, driver technology from SciTech. And we talked to uh, Lisa Brady there, who's one of the, the principals, about getting our own license to do something with SNAP. Uh, we talked to some of the former SNAP developers uh, who were involved with SNAP, um, even at, at SciTech, um, about the feasibility of fixing some of the things in SNAP and improving on the, uh, the overall driver. It all seemed to make sense, so we continued the discussions with Alt Richmond. Um, we started to put uh, the beta test team and the translation teams together for Yummy, which is our RPM, Yum, and Warpin uh, repository manager. Um, and that work has progressed uh, considerably. That, uh, that all really got underway in the first quarter of 2015. We released some USB updates, of course, some other driver updates. Um, David was working on, on multi-Mac, as, uh, as you can see, and now he's pretty much focused his attention on that. And we started talking about updating Samba to the latest version uh, and including Kerberos for authentication. This allows us to talk to new as in brand new Windows servers and authenticate against Active Directory. Next slide, please. So the second quarter, um, we focused on the Samba and Kerberos and SNAP situations. With SNAP, we signed a license with Alt Richmond uh, for the, the SNAP source code. 
we now have the SNAP developer uh, development team in place. Uh, the team has um, five or six members on it right now uh, who will be doing different things with the, with the code. You will see a rebranded SNAP come out. It will be Arkanoe SNAP video. Um, I'll talk some more about what we're, what we're doing with that code in a minute. We got the Samba development moving again. Uh, Paul Smedley has been instrumental in, in that work. Um, and the reason that, that Samba development uh, and Kerberos um, have come along is really a request from a, a large client, um, which of course is the way a lot of this work gets done. There's a, a need for it for a large user base, and then everyone is able to benefit from the work. We're now testing Samba 4.2.2, which is the latest Samba build available for any platform. We don't have a working NetDrive plugin for it yet. I want to talk about that in a minute also. Uh, but we are able to use the Samba client tools to connect to a, um, a Samba share on a remote server. Kerberos authentication is working, so we can create tickets with Kerberos. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. And we continue to work on, on Yummy, which has um, been delayed mainly due to feature creep. We just kept adding things that we thought we were really going to need in the product. Next slide, please. So the focus for the remainder of 2015 is going to be getting the Samba 4 client out with full support for SMB2 uh, and MTLM version 2 and a NetDrive plugin. If you check the NetLabs repository, you'll see that um, Sylvan has done some check-ins of Samba code uh, there. And whatever we do with, with Samba will get checked into NetLab. Samba is an open source product, project, and we are committed to contributing to that open source initiative. Kerberos 5, um, we're, we will have a deliverable package of Kerberos 5, um, possibly two deliverable packages because we've, we've got the MIT build of, of Kerberos 5 working, and we're now working with Heimdall because the Samba project switched to Heimdall Kerberos in Samba 4. So two different flavors of Kerberos, uh, and we will likely package both of those for distribution, so they will be available. Um, enhancements to warp in, we've been working with um, Paul Ratcliffe. There are some things that we need to add to WIC in order to make all of that stuff come together with, uh, with Yummy. Uh, in my Yummy presentation I'll, uh, tomorrow, I'll talk some more about how that's supposed to work. But essentially, just the way we handle uh, Yum repositories on remote servers, we will be able to handle remote repositories of warp-in archives and you'll be able to see what server has what warp-in archives uh, available for download, what uh, warp-in archives are newer than what's installed on the local system, select the newer packages, and install the newer software right from the, the yummy GUI. Um, and we do intend before the end of the year to have a yummy GA. Um, as I say, it's really been feature creep that's held us back. Next slide, please. Also on a list for 2015 is SNAP fixes. We know that there are some instabilities with SNAP on SMP systems. Um, we believe that we know what those, those uh, issues are, and we've got a plan for addressing them. Once we get it stable, 
then we're going to look at some enhancements. Um, on my slide, I say ports, ports, and more ports. Um, newer systems are shipping without analog VGA. Newer systems are shipping without DVI. We want to be able to support HDMI and display port outputs on new machines. And we want to be able to handle multi-head with those new ports. And, of course, new chipsets. Snap left off at a point before widescreen displays were very well distributed. Um, now that widescreens are the norm uh, and 4x3s, which are the screens that I happen to prefer, are becoming rare, it's difficult to run all the, the native widescreen resolutions on, on SNAP. New chipset support will address that shortcoming. We're going to start with the Intel HD because it's a, a popular chipset and the specs are available. Uh, we're certainly willing to look at adding more chipsets if anyone has uh, requests and the sources are available, the, the, the uh, specifications are available from the manufacturers. We're definitely interested in looking at uh, other chipsets. Next slide, please. So Yum and Warpin repositories. Um, what Arcanoa plans to do is make software and drivers available to um, not just our own subscribers uh, who can right now download to the, the web interface. You have to log into your account and then access uh, your, your subscription content from there. You'll be able to do that from Yummy. In addition, Arcanoe will have uh, unrestricted repositories, so there will be some content that will be available from Arcanoe, and you don't even need to have a subscription. It's it will be completely free, uh, and those packages will show up in Yummy as being available for download. Some of those packages will be RPM. Some of those packages will be warping. Um, so we plan to expand that uh, availability of software uh, download. Next slide, please. So some other things that have, have happened and are happening at Arcanoe. Um, many people still think that Serenity Systems International is involved with Ecom Station. The truth of the matter is that there really is no Serenity Systems International and hasn't been for quite some time. All that was left of Serenity Systems was really the, the domain name and the content, the little bit of content there was on the website. Well, through an arrangement with Bob St. John, we have acquired that. And so people who visit Serenity Systems International come over to a page that um, is slightly updated content that links to Arcanoe and to Bitwise, who is a strategic partner of ours. As you can see on the second bullet point, we do have strong ties to Bitwise. Uh, we fund and support the development of the, the latest Firefox builds and other projects that, that uh, with which Bitwise is engaged. And that will continue. Um, we're working on developing our reseller program and providing uh, back-end support for our resellers. In other words, you don't need to come to Arcanoe to get the Arcanoe subscription. You can purchase it through one of our resellers. Uh, if you go to the Arcanoe website and you take a look at our partner page, you'll see that we have some partners listed there. We're very happy that you frequent our partners. If it's easier for you to do business with someone you know, um, uh, Neil from uh, Blonde Guy Computers is a, is a partner of ours. 
Bitwise, is, as I say, is a strategic partner. You can purchase the Arc and OA subscription from either of those and other strategic partners of ours, resellers. The company is expanding, uh, adding personnel. We've, um, we've recently uh, opened up uh, telephone lines, and we've put on Howard Winter as a, um, a customer service coordinator. If there's something that you don't feel uh, fits into an email to send to sales at arcanoe.com, you can certainly pick up the phone. Uh, the phone numbers are listed on our contact page. And we have a, a U.S. number and a U.K. number. Call Howard, and he will gladly answer your questions. We are listening to users and administrators. If you have suggestions, something you'd like to see, um, new drivers, um, an update to something. There is an open source project that seems to have been stalled somewhere. Maybe we can help. Please let us know. And watch our roadmap. I've got the link on the slide. Um, about the only thing that's not quite up to date on our roadmap is that Yummy is still listed as a short-term, near-term project, and it's turned out to be a mid-term project. I was going to really move it, and I realized, well, we're probably within that three-month window before we go GA, so I want to leave it where it is for right now. Next slide, please. Anyone have any questions? There are no questions in the room. They've been working on very hard to keep it up to pace. And as you might have also noticed, uh, Firefox is being turned into every in an almost a 1,001 kitchen appliance that does everything from doing your laundry to ironing your shirts. The code keeps getting bigger. And well, anyway, we're, we're as a community at least now have, thanks to Bitwise Works, got version 31.6. And from what I understood from his email, they will be making that publicly available soon. So it's getting close. So also in Fire, in terms of web browser support, we're also staying pretty current. And for people that don't know what ESR releases are, that's for corporate customers who want to have a browser that is supported longer than the version that was only supported as it seems yesterday, because you've probably seen Firefox is currently at version number 37. And Oh, thank you. Well, there you go. Nobody can keep up with them. So I just showed that screenshot, Lewis. Do you have any other things to say? Um, not at this point. I have more to talk about uh, concerning Yummy uh, tomorrow. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it, just to bring everyone up to speed as to what uh, Arkanoe has been, been doing, in case everyone thought that we were all sitting on our hands.
<laughs> oh, uh, there's a question from Keith. If you could say anything about UEFI support. If I could say anything about UEFI support. Um, okay, in fact, we, I, I actually have a blog post that's, that's in draft uh, concerning uh, a tech note about booting OS2 on UEFI systems. Um, so here's the story with UEFI. As, as you know, Arkanoe is a member of the UEFI uh, forum. Now, what does that mean? Uh, not really a whole heck of a lot, other than the fact that I get a lot of, well, not a lot, but I get email from, from them whenever they have an announcement to make. Um, but uh, David has, uh, um, in ACPI, part of what's falling under the UEFI forum control is um, Oh, what am I? I'm, I'm losing. I'm losing focus. Uh, well, it's it's not it's not coming to me off off the top of my head. Sorry. I, in terms of booting uh, you on a US, UEFI system, we still need um, an emulated BIOS, so it it must have legacy BIOS support. Uh, in, in UEFI, whether we will actually get to the point where we can, we can fully boot on a UEFI system um, is unknown at this time. Um, GBT partitioning is another uh, related issue for us. We still don't handle GPT partitioning. We still need uh, uh, traditional disk partitioning. But in general, um, most machines that we're seeing today of uh, commercial grade do have such uh, legacy support in them. So it's just a matter of making sure that the UEFI BIOS is switched into legacy mode so that we can boot on it. Does that answer the question? Did you hear that, Lewis? On some systems, we don't have compatibility mode. Um, there's not much we're going to be able to do about that. Um, it, it, in other words, getting us to the point of being able to actually boot on a UEFI system without compatibility mode is um, a tremendous amount of work and we haven't even started looking at that yet. Other questions? USB three. Question. You can't ask about that. <laughs> <laughs> Question is about USB three O, Lewis. Yeah. Yes. Um, so the latest discussion that we've had about USB uh, 3.0 is that um, the, David can probably talk more about, about this, but it would appear that it will be less, um, less of a, uh, a hurdle for us to include the, the USB 3.0 module as part of the, um, the existing USB infrastructure that we have, just like uh, OHCI. So we would have XHCI for USB 3. Um, but that work has not, not yet uh, begun. We've talked about it, but we're not, we, we haven't launched into that yet. Well, yeah, that's 
Well, from what I understood from a technical magazine at my employer, USB 3.1 is a whole lot more complex as it even allows you to connect computer screens to it. And I think USB 3.0 doesn't do it. It's only a dot one update, but there's, it seems there are some pretty major redesign things in USB 3.1. So, I don't know. We haven't discussed USB 3 enough to make a, a determination as to whether we're going to go to 3.0 or 3.1. Uh, it's still, as I say, we're, we're still very early in, in that uh, process. Um, but it is, it is on our, our list of drivers that we, that we do want to do. So we will keep everyone posted on that as we get closer to really doing something. Oh, there's another question, which I guess is going to be a toughie for you. IP version 6. You know, I had a conversation with um, Knut, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago about IPv6. And he had some ideas about swapping the entire, US, uh, the entire I, uh, IP stack, uh, TCP stack, rather, in... Uh, in OS2. Um, there hasn't been any significant progress made in that, in that direction. In general, IPv4, at least behind firewalls, is going to be around for a considerable amount of time. We are by far not the only operating system uh, limited to IPv4. And most broadband providers are rolling out dual stack implementations. So even there, we're not limited. If you actually wanted to put an OS2 machine on the border and use something like Enjoy, um, Enjoy Firewall will still work because IPv4 addresses are not going away. And what's going to happen, I think, is as more people adopt IPv6 and give up their IPv4 addressing, we'll have more IPv4 addresses to stretch that uh, lifespan a bit longer uh, in the, the, on the public internet. Behind firewalls, most firewalls will do dual stack. So you can have IPv6 on the outside and you can do IPv4 inside the firewall and with the exception of being able to resolve things like AAAA addresses, um, you should be able to work just fine. When the time comes that it looks like we really do need IPv6, we will look at that, um, but it's not a priority for us at this point. Any other questions? I think there are no further questions here then actually. All right, all right. Well, I'm going to switch back to my, my large screen TV and watch everyone over my Roku because you're all nice and big on that screen. Um, and I will follow along and I will chat with everyone tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.